Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I am Tina Jha. In his first trip to a foreign country since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Dhaka, the capital of neighbouring Bangladesh, on Friday morning. He was accorded a special welcome at the airport. His counterpart, Sheikh Hasina, personally received him and a salute of 19 guns and guard of honour were accorded to Prime Minister Modi. He then visited the National Martyrs Memorial and paid homage to those who died in the 1971 Bangladesh War of Independence. He also joined the celebration programme as the guest of honour at the National Parade Square to mark, in fact, celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Bangladesh's independence and the birth centenary of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bilateral talks with the Bangladeshi Prime Minister will take place on Saturday, where at least five MOUs are expected to be signed and a number of other projects will be inaugurated virtually by both Prime Ministers. Ahead of his departure, the Prime Minister had said in his message that India's partnership with Bangladesh is an important pillar of our neighbourhood first policy and that India is committed to further deepen and diversify it. So on this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse with experts the significance of the Prime Minister's visit to Bangladesh, a look back at the 50-year-long India-Bangladesh ties and the areas where we still need to focus on to further cement this relationship with our neighbouring country. Joining me on the programme are two special guests. Let me first introduce them to you. I'm joined on the show today by Mr. Anil Trigunyath, his former ambassador, and Dr. Sriram Cholia, foreign affairs expert. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, so let me begin the programme with you. Bangladesh for India is not just a neighbour. It is a trusted friend, a valued friend. And this has time and again been asserted by Prime Minister Modi in recent months. And the fact that his first foreign trip also comes to Bangladesh since the outbreak of the pandemic is reflective of the importance that the Prime Minister attaches to relations with our neighbouring country. So now as we mark 50 years of our diplomatic ties with Bangladesh, how would you look back at these five decades of our special friendship? How has this partnership evolved over these years? Well, thank you, Tina, for having me. And uh, I would like to congratulate our Bangladeshi friends on their Independence Day and both the countries for celebrating the 50th anniversary of our establishment of diplomatic relations. In fact, this whole year, uh, since the past year, have been gone on uh, with various kinds of activities, uh, including for the first time when we saw 122 uh, member military contingent from Bangladesh participating on our Independence Day, uh, on our Republic Day Parade. So, and uh, in addition, there have been several um, uh, visits, meetings, virtual uh, discussions, including between the two prime ministers uh, on our relationship. So today, all as you rightly mentioned, the relationship is probably at its best. And uh, in our South Asia region, I would rate it as uh, better than any other relationship uh, in the region for the time at this moment of history that we are looking at. Uh, the, as you know, that India's relationship with Bangladesh turns out to be umbilical. Whether we look at it in a greater India context or we look at it uh, 1947 and then 1971 context, uh, in both uh, these paradigms, there have been uh, a possibility where uh, India could be more closer to Bangladesh. But uh, what happened is in 1971 really changed the whole uh, gamut uh, of interaction with uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, when Bangladesh was created. And India played uh, the, the crucial and critical role in its independence celebration uh, by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi at the time and our forces. Um, but since then, uh, the relationship moved on till we signed the 25 years Treaty of Friendship. After Mujibur Rahman, when he was assassinated, and we had uh, several uh, decades really of uh, troubled relationship, I would say. It was not that cordial uh, because the military regime at the time, whether it was uh, Jiao Rahman or the others, they tried, Khaled Azia, they tried to uh, go back uh, to their old uh, Pakistani friends to a great extent. And at one of those junctures, when President Shah was there, I was posted in Bangladesh and I have seen it firsthand. But since then, if you come to see when uh, Sheikh Hazina came to power and from 2007 onwards, in the last 12, 13 years, the relationship has just moved on and on and on. And not only that, I must uh, compliment the government of Bangladesh uh, for becoming one of the most progressive, especially in the socioeconomic index, an economy that is growing, a country that is 
confident of itself in a 50 years period. And compared to that, you look at Pakistan where it has gone. And in that journey of theirs, India's role has been very prominent because we have followed this neighborhood for, uh, first policy for a very, very long time. We have followed a, a, a non-reciprocal policy with all our neighbors. And with Bangladesh, we have had a special relations all through. And uh, because it is the longest border, and today Bangladesh happens to be our largest trading partner in the in South Asian region. Uh, we are the second largest trading partner with about $10 billion in total trade. India has been providing tremendous assistance, both in capacity building and infrastructure development to Bangladesh. Uh, our relationship in defense security areas has grown. They have helped us a great deal in reducing violence uh, or terrorism from their side and giving refuge to various Northeast uh, uh, rebel groups uh, who were finding refuge in their borders and earlier the BDR and others were supporting them uh, in attacking in India. But that has all been curtailed. So what we can see today is Maitri all the way. Much more can be done. But I would say that today the relationship uh, in, gold, in these 50 years, the Golden Jubilee as they call, uh, it has been a very good relationship. But as they are looking to become a Sonar Bangla and in India to become a goldsmith for that, I think uh, the relationship uh, has a greater uh, uh, traction, will have a greater traction in the next five years. Absolutely. Decades. So which are the areas that will uh, require focus in the years to come is something that we'll talk about in the course of the program. But uh, coming to you, Dr. Sridham Cholia, on trying to understand what Mr. Trigunyat says uh, that, you know, uh, our relationship has evolved at present. India and Bangladesh share much deep, deeper and our relationship has also matured over the years. And that's why I think uh, the relationship between both countries is also often described as a textbook example of how a neighborly relationship should be. Apart from the shared bonds of history, language and culture that we share, what are the other factors that have helped both India and Bangladesh consolidate the foundation of our relationship in the last 50 years? Well, yes, Tina, it is indeed a model um, neighborly relationship. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind, uh, which is similar, is uh, Mexico and the United States. See, uh, they have uh, buried historical differences and uh, no longer claim territory of each other. And uh, there is a heavy American investment in Mexico and Mexican growth is now uh, intertwined with that of the US and Mexico has become a middle income country by uh, making sure that it has a positive uh, non-zero sum game relationship with the US. Same thing I would say Bangladesh has done uh, very successfully, especially under Sheikh Hasina, as Ambassador was mentioning. Um, so apart from culture, language, and uh, history, which of course tires, what is really working for us is that, you know, Prime Minister Modi worked um, uh, hard to overcome the uh, some of the outstanding issues that were still left over, like the land boundary agreement, the maritime uh, agreement on um, Bay of Bengal, maritime waters. These things actually created, created a lot of confidence after 2014 in Bangladesh. Um, there used to be a very strong anti-India uh, faction in Bangladeshi politics before uh, 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 a decade ago. Now, you know, that's been completely marginalized, except some far leftists and some hardline uh, jihadist groups and, uh, and radical Islamists. Nobody, not even the BNP, which is the main opposition party uh, in, in Bangladesh, which historically used to be anti even they have now, they are looking to get India support. Uh, to to uh, try and balance out Sheikh Hasina. So if you look at it that way, uh, we have come along, uh, you know, quite far. And uh, the reasons are due to this sovereignty. There's never an issue of sovereignty between us. I mean, sometimes there are incidents on the border, on the eastern India's eastern and northeastern border with Bangladesh. Sometimes, you know, trespasses are shot and such things happen. But there is complete agreement between the two sides as to the reason for it. In fact, Dr. Jay Shankar, our foreign minister, was asked recently about these incidents at the border. And he said, you know, it's largely due to criminal and illicit activities uh, that are happening there. And uh, if we don't want crime, then, you know, we need law enforcement on both sides. So in other words, the same thing happens in Mexico-US border, you know. Uh, it's a very positive and friendly relationship, no matter who is in power or who is not, because they have a sense that they are not competing against each other. So I think that matters, the confidence and the trust. The other thing is, uh, Ambassador was talking about the economic relationship. What we have done, we have now built uh, integrated check posts 
at many of the border points to facilitate easy movement of goods and of uh, legal um, uh, trans uh, movement of people across the border we used to have this illegal immigration problem from bangladesh for a long time but now you see the, the uh, it's a fact that we are issuing legal visas um, in dhaka in chittagong where our embassies and high commissions are there and and consulates are there uh, directly for bangladeshis to for legitimate reasons and today prime minister was also offering to bring more um, uh, bangladeshi students to india he was offering uh, to uh, 50 50th year of, of uh, diplomatic relations he was saying we'll bring 50 bangladeshi entrepreneurs to work with indian entrepreneurs to build uh, new startups and uh, uh, and businesses for young people so i think uh, as far as legitimate movement goes we are all for it and earlier the bangladeshis used to be cross about one thing they used to say you indians you make it so hard for us to enter your country because you think all of us are illegal migrant they used to they used to often uh, crib about it in private now that thing has gone you know we have become much more liberal so yes. i think the generosity of india the strategic generosity of india under modi administration has really won the hearts and minds people were saying uh, citizenship act will uh, ruffle feathers in bangladesh if so why are why is the uh, prime minister being welcomed so open heartedly today in dhaka and why is he going to be going to be traveling across the country tomorrow it's unprecedented he is going to go to uh, lesser known places the bangladesh tourism uh, uh, minister Uh, was uh, was heard saying that we want narendra modi to come because that way more indian tourists will come and it will benefit our economy so they very pragmatic non ideological pragmatic and they are looking for win win solutions and that is so where you know india has really yes. clasped the hand so the fact that a, lo- a lot of long pending issues have been resolved in the last few years and the efforts uh, that have been made to establish people to people connect that is something that uh, uh, dr cholia has been pointing out but coming to the prime minister's visit ambassador how significant is this one in terms of enhancing this already very uh, strong cooperation that india and bangladesh share you see as you had in the beginning mentioned that uh, this happens to be the prime minister's first visit uh, since the pandemic uh, happened and even now the pandemic we are facing and bangladesh happened to be the first country where we provided the vaccines in the beginning itself and uh, i believe that the prime minister himself uh, will be con- uh, giving them donating some more vaccines to them we have tried to work with bangladesh very closely but this is a time now to take it to the next level and as you know today the foreign minister of bangladesh when he called on prime minister uh, he uh, in response to his questions he said the relationship between the two countries is rock solid and that was said in the context of uh, china's relationship which they called as a development partner and they said it is not going to impact uh, on relationship with india in any way because that is one of the things that our neighborhood in south asia especially uh, tends to become um, a, a sort of a, a jostling ground for india and china and that's where the, the, there is always an issue as that one talks about and he that is something coming from the bangladeshi side likewise as you dr cholia mentioned about the nrc and the ca and all this question again he said this is an internal matter of india that we have nothing to do with it i mean that is a sea change in their approach they understand and, and this was mentioned by dr cholia very pragmatic leadership and very pragmatic approaches that they have because india does not believe in this religious kind of things uh, the, or the policies in that matter but we have to um, also communicate whatever we say i mean i have always mentioned that when we frame a law it should not look like the constitution of india that you keep on interpreting it it should be clear small single uh, sentences and li- nice words clearly openly available to a person who can read it so that's where there is no uh, uh, no problem should come in that and i think the prime minister modi's presence there and when he's saying that uh, that we are in it together that india will continue to support bangladesh and today bangladesh can uh, as i said earlier uh, is doing extremely well economically and socially both in all the way is in, including in its uh, fight of the pandemic and bangladesh also has a few lessons to teach to the uh, to, to the world uh, not only the india bangladesh relationship where conflict resolution has become a model um, a, a 54 river waters and you know there a new area in which we can not uh, more than uh, 8 billion dollar and uh, lines of credits that we have given is being very significantly utilized to develop the infrastructure in bangladesh and that will connect to us for example you see Uh, if you want to send things from kolkata to agartala in india going via chittagong is going to be far more cheaper and quicker 
uh, than uh, within India itself. So therefore, Bangladesh could play a connectivity-wise a very important role, not within the South Asian region, but also in the in East Asia region. So I think that okay. what we are looking, the ministers are talking about that healthcare and education are two important sectors in which they would like to focus uh, a, a great deal. And okay, okay. I think Dr. Tolly? microfinancing mm -hmm. and the financing of the project, energy sector, creating energy corridor. We are facing some uh, audio issues, Ambassador. We'll, we'll, we'll... Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Dr. Cholli, uh, let me bring in you here. Since we're talking about taking the relationship to a new level, in areas of connectivity, people to people connect, we have seen a lot of initiatives have been undertaken, particularly in the last few years. But as the ambassador was pointing out, which are the new areas <coughs> that now offer a lot of opportunity for both countries to n further expand this connect? Well, Tina, one is the, you know, regional integration initiatives that we uh, have launched and we have strengthened in recent years. One is the BBIN, the Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal corridor. Uh, the other is the larger grouping of BIMSTEC, Bay of Bengal initiative. Now, Bangladesh is at the heart of both the BBIN and the BIMSTEC. And uh, like Ambassador was mentioning, there, one, it can be a transit uh, because of geography, uh, both through inland waterways and through directly uh, through the roadway and railways between India's mainland and the northeast, but also with the with Southeast Asia, and that's where you know. Uh, so Bangladesh is not only uh, central to the SARC and to South Asia's uh, integration, but also to our Act East policy, where we want to uh, reach out to Myanmar and beyond. So I think Bangladesh is location, location matters, the geo location, the geographical location, and we will want to leverage that much more. Um, there is the Tista water record that has not yet been resolved. And, you know, from time to time, there are objections from uh, Indian uh, side in West Bengal due to political reasons. Uh, so those uh, are, I think, some of the outstanding issues which they would like us to resolve. But already, I mean, they're not complaining. Frankly, they've already got plenty. In And um, Bangladesh uh, garments, Bangladesh electronics, all these, you know, are uh, super hits in the world. Uh, they are exporting. They have managed to maintain very high growth rate uh, due to these exports, uh, even despite the pandemic. In fact, they have even better growth rate than India uh, in the last uh, few years. So um, that is something where they may want more access to the Indian market, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we can be generous. We can consider uh, sector wise. Um, even the Bangladeshi remittances from abroad have been uh, pouring in in a big way in the last uh, couple of years and are helping, are helping shore up their economy. One area which we can do, apart from BIMSTEC and BBIN, for economic uh, uh, co collaboration is uh, bring in Japan and do trilateral projects. Because Japan is a big uh, player in the region, both in Myanmar, and uh, they want to be uh, involved in India's Northeast and connecting to Bangladesh. So Japanese infrastructure uh, projects uh, are much welcomed uh, in Bangladesh because Bangladesh needs Japan to counterbalance China. So otherwise, the Chinese are coming in with bags of money and saying, we will build this port, we will build this, um, uh, you know, a bridge and railway and uh, reconstruct your highways and all those things. But uh, Sheikh Hasina, great lady, she's always maintained a balance and made sure that it doesn't become a kind of a Chinese playground. So that is where, that is one of the reasons that understanding with India, you know, uh, we are very clear that we will do everything for them, for their security, for their economy. Uh, and for the integration to the region, and in return, they do not, you know, cross the red lines, uh, which which might cause alarm bells ringing in Delhi. So I think on that count, uh, Japan is going to be a very valuable partner, and they want to uh, be involved. So we should be thinking innovatively in terms of third and fourth and fifth countries, and how we can come together and place Bangladesh in the middle. Huge so market, 170 million people rising middle class, middle income country, you know, it can also consume a lot of products uh, that we continue to export to them and we can buy more from them. Those are the kind of ideas. In fact, uh, Dr. Jayashankar was saying that the geo-economics of the Bay of Bengal depends on Bangladesh. So that entire region, the eastern flank of India, we can energize economically all the way up to the ASEAN countries via Bangladesh. So that should that be, I think, the way forward to be yes. so that they get that sense of importance and value. Okay, Ambassador. So, uh, to 
Mm -hmm. tap the potential fully. So we've spoken about as far as the physical connectivity aspect is concerned, several initiatives have been taken and we've, we've, we are doing quite well on that front. But now the focus uh, is needed on translating these into business ventures and development tools, uh, which are in the best interest of both countries. So how can that be done? How can these transport corridors be transformed into economic corridors uh, that Dr. Cholia was uh, talking about? Well, this is absolutely important. The governments can provide a platform, <clears throat> can be the facilitators, and even provide the capital where it is required as far as. But the uh, the private capital, the private entrepreneurship flows to where the opportunity is. And I think that the, today, if you come to think of it, the way the interactions are happening, a uh, large number of Indian businesses are looking at Bangladesh in a very, very significant manner. A large number of Indian companies are going there, and I know personally, um, whether in textile sector or otherwise, that a lot of fabric goes from India to Bangladesh and it's manufactured there and from then exported to the US and all everywhere else uh, forever. I mean, th this is something in which we can do together. There are uh, new uh, nuclear energy cooperation, civil nuclear energy cooperation, where with Russia, India, and uh, Professor already mentioned about, um, uh, about Japan. I mean, but Russia has, is very keen on working with India in Bangladesh for their Rupur nuclear civil plant in which we can work together. So there are so many opportunities for Indian businesses uh, to, um, to acquire uh, the strategic assets and work together with their Bangladeshi counterparts. Because for Bangladeshis always look to India in a good way. I mean, as one of the ministers, I think today only, he said, we want to be in this Mahajatra of peace and prosperity. Shanti and Samriddhi with India. And I think that this is this is quite possible. But one last point I would like to make is that more important today is because the 50 years are gone, right? That generation uh, will only have some stories to tell. But what we need to do today is to engage the youth in both the countries so that there is a greater appreciation for one another. Uh, we are culturally alike, linguistically, we have a tremendous commonality. So we need to build upon that because that is what is going to hold the relationship uh, in, a, in a much uh, deeper and uh, closer manner. And I think that, that that's where we need to work together quite a bit. Absolutely. So, Ambassador, when we talk about expanding our cooperation and this organic relationship that we share, we also must take into account some of the hiccups that we have in the otherwise warm relationship that we share with Bangladesh. One among them is the Tista or river water sharing that Dr. Cholia was talking about. What is it that is delaying a resolution to this long pending issue? Well, we know that uh, all our neighbors uh, but in uh, there are also Indian states and we have a federal structure. And as far as Bangladesh is concerned, we know that uh, it is the uh, state of West Bengal uh, where there are certain issues. And uh, my, my hunch is that Bangladesh understand that. And my hunch is that this will be resolved soon, uh, sooner than later. It is a question of water sharing. And this has been from a very large time. I remember when we were there, Vishwesuraya committee and all that, they used to meet. So waterways are going to be very important uh, connectivity for us and I think we need to once the elections are over in, in West Bengal I think we might see some progress there. Okay we're all hopeful towards that. Dr. Cholia one uh, closing comment from you because India and Bangladesh share a relationship that is based on mutual trust in the wake of a new emerging world order in the post-COVID world how can these two countries collaborate for their own interest and also for the larger benefit of the region? I think the security aspect also needs to be looked into. Today, PM was talking about the fact that the terrorist threat is still active in the region. And uh, we should be watchful, vigilant. There should be more intelligence cooperation between Bangladesh and India to make sure none of the jihadist elements uh, which are in touch with the ISI on the other side, on the Pakistani side, and which could be um, used to carry out uh, nefarious activities uh, in India. I think, uh, and within, within Bangladesh too, there has been a so-called ISIS uh, resurgence in the last few years. Sheikh Hasina has been trying to control this with a firm hand, but uh, you cannot always do this uh, on your own. So I think uh, she always looks up to India and to Prime Minister Modi for cooperation on that. So security cooperation, we have to also enhance uh, and stamp out the uh, menace of uh, radical uh, Islamist uh, you know, insurgents and, and terrorists. The other thing I would say, the China factor also, PM mentioned that uh, there is no diplomacy which could uh, make uh, India-Bangladesh relationship uh, a victim. 
ये सर कोई कूटनीति नहीं है जो जो हमें शिकार बना सकते हैं वॉट यू टॉकिंग अबाउट इज द चाइनीज यू नो एफर्ट्स टू वीन अवे मेनी ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज फ्रॉम इंडिया ऑर्बिट एंड टू ट्राई टू मेक दम पार्ट ऑफ दी साइनोसेंट्रिक ऑर्डर uh in asia so i think we have to work continuously with bangladesh uh, uh we have to be generous to them continue to be generous to them we have to keep winning their hearts and minds much more and uh, i think going forward as ambassador was saying we have to tap into younger generation that's why pm is talking about bringing more bangladeshi students and engaging the youth much more because ultimately uh, the memories of 1971 will fade away for a next generation they are saying what is it that india will give me which china is not already giving you know so that's where we have to comp- beat hard and we have to be uh, absolutely clear that history is great and that's the basis of this relationship but at the same time india brings you know additional uh, uh, value and utility to the people of bangladesh and the more developmental partnerships we do with them the better off we will be absolutely and since the 21st century is being touted as the asian century it is uh, important for both india and bangladesh to collaborate in areas to the best of their interest tap their potential and truly make it their century so with that i'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to both my guests for joining me on the program and sharing your thoughts with us on the india bangladesh relationship So that's it from us on the program just in case you missed the television broadcast you can also watch it on YouTube and Twitter and you can get back to us with your feedback and suggestions as well thank you for your time